What's up guys, welcome to Wrench Capital. I have a long futures trading session ahead of me. It's going to be approximately five hours. I'm going to record the whole thing and then show it to you. We'll just take you with me, whatever happens. I'm a scalp trader, so it's likely to be a lot of trades, at least ideally. I did film an entire two and a half hour session yesterday in the late, late afternoon and didn't catch a single trade, which is about the most bizarre thing that's happened to me all month. Um, to sit down for that long, even in the afternoon where it's bound to be a little bit slower and not catch a single scalp. For a lot of intraday swing traders, that's pretty normal, right? But as a scalp trader, my trades are quick and they need to be frequent because the edge is not going to be massive as a scalp trader. The way to make money as a scalp trader is get a little bit of edge and then scale the volume of trades while maintaining that edge always and always sticking to the plan, right? It's the same business model that Vegas was built on, okay? So, I'm gonna take you with me, let's jump in. Now, this time of morning, which market for me opens at 8.30, so right now it's 9.45, I would typically be trading the micros, because I trade the micros while volatility is higher uh, to allow me to manage my risk the way I want to, and I, I switch over to the e-mini NASDAQ futures contracts, right? when the volatility is lower. So typically I'm looking at that blue, it's kind of being hidden right now behind the eight, right? But that blue number back there is the average true range of the last 10 one minute bars. When that's above 10, at least this is the rule currently on my rubber band reaper setup that I'm still kind of developing for futures trading specifically. When that's above 10, that ATR, I'll trade the micros. When it's below 10, I switch over to the minis. Okay, so uh, right now, again, these are, I'm trading 10, uh, copy trading 10 evaluation accounts for the prop firm, of course, it's Apex. But the reason I do that, by the way, with the, uh, the contract switching is because I can trade five micros in a higher volatility environment and manage my risk the exact same way as I can with one mini. Okay, so I have to make that change. Not to mention the reason I also make that change rather than going from, uh, five micros with wider a wider you know reward to risk ratio and then i just switch to 10 micros with a tighter reward to risk ratio as volatility contracts throughout the day no no no. i go from five to one mini uh, five micros to one mini and and contract the ratio and it's the same dollar reward and risk to keep my trades consistent which is very important as a scalp trader the reason i do that rather than going to 10 micros is to save on commissions. So you got to be a little bit creative if, when you're taking a lot of trades. If you're taking one trade a day, you're fine. The commissions aren't going to be, the, you know, much of a concern for you. But if you're if you want to be a scalp trader, you know, you got to think about these things cuz they add up quick. When you're taking 10, 20, 30 trades in a single day, you got to be optimizing your fees and commissions as much as you can. Don't obsess over it. You know, it's not going to make or break your career. But you got to make sure you're being smart. Now, one thing that I've been thinking about a lot here, see how that ATR is now at 10.01? I have a problem with higher volatility environments using my tighter 2.5 point reward to 10 point risk. Again, I'm going for a very high win rate, 83 to 85% on this, on this strategy, which is why I'm running such a negative reward to risk. The math can work in any which way. It's just a math and psychology question. The problem is when I'm running the ratio tight and the volatility is higher, like it's kind of on the edge of should I trade the micros or the minis, sometimes when I'm trading one mini with the tighter reward to risk, again, two and a half point reward, 10 point risk, the trades happen so fast that it causes massive issues with the copy trader. I need to almost slow things down a little bit. So when it's at like 9.83, and you guys are going to find this in your strategies, there's, there's these little nuanced things that it's like, ah, I don't, I don't really know how to, how to approach this. Cause I don't want to go too wide where the trade loses its elasticity back in to actually hit my target. Like the rubber band that I enter goes slack and gives it less and less reason to actually hit my target, which kind of throws the whole strategy out the window. But if I also go two and a half and 10 rather than five and 20, which is what I trade on the micros, if I go two and a half and 10, it might snap back so fast and fill my target so fast that the copy trader doesn't have time to actually fill all my accounts and I get flipped negative and it causes pro or I sorry, I get flipped the opposite direction and it just causes massive is issues. And that's not really helpful either when I'm trying to copy trade 10 accounts. 
So that that's something that I'm just wanting to kind of like talk out loud with you guys and and think about because that's something I'm thinking about a lot here. I might have to decrease that uh, ATR requirement to make the switch to, from ten to maybe seven fifty. But right now I'm going to leave it. I'm going to trade the mini because it's below ten, and that's what my plan currently says. And and, and that that rule remains to be decided. Push to twelve, and I'll fade that. I need to see twelve though. Five seconds, hands off. Five seconds left on the candle, that is. I don't like to take, to enter scalps, I should say, right on the candle switch. Because sometimes, even on the one minute, that candle switch can, can just mess with the movement a little bit. And I, I don't want to be in on that. You push to ten and a half and I'll fade that move. Need it in the next five seconds? Come on, give me a push. Can't take it, not there. But ATR has come down a little bit now. Getting kind of deep into the day, not a lot of opportunity yet. But we'll get some. If I can get a push down to 10, I'll happily fade that back upside. I need that in the next 16 seconds. No trade. A little bit more. Eight and a quarter. And I'll fade this here. Can we get something, finally. It's not, <laughs> it's not there. I can't take it. Oh, man, it's been a frustrating morning so far. You see, with guys, with me, and I think this is one of the benefits of scalping, actually, and tracking your data, my frustration... Hang on, we gotta... We gotta stay focused here and look. If I can get a push to eight and a quarter, eight and a half, then I'll fade that move there. Doesn't look like we're gonna get it. My frustration comes not from losing trades as much. My frustration comes from when the market just isn't giving me setups. Cause I know that, you know, again, it's, there, it's yet to be seen on the rubber band reaper for me. But I have a pretty good idea that there's some edge there with the data that I already have. So, that being the case, as long as I stick to that plan, the edge plays out if I take enough trades. But when the market doesn't give me any trades, that's where it's really frustrating because I'm working and not really generating any, you know, positive expected value. Losing's okay because at least I'm lock I'm getting trades in, right? I'm just going through the process of letting the edge play out. When the market gives me nothing, that's when it gets frustrating. A little bit more here and I can fade that move. Looking for about eight and a half. Three seconds. See, that, that's, I think that's, you know, the benefit of recording these videos in a live setting. Um, market gave me a trade. I punched my macro. I tried it twice because it didn't register the first time, didn't register the second time. And the macro pad was unresponsive. First time hitting a button all day. And sometimes that occurs, and it's that's frustrating. Um, but you know, it, it's not going to be perfect. Even it, you know, it's easy to say, well, why don't you just offload all this to an algorithm? Maybe someday I will. But algorithms have a lot of their own problems. Algorithms aren't perfect. Algorithms break. Algorithms have led to some tragedies in trading history. Something breaks. Power goes out. Algorithm keeps firing. You don't know how to stop it immediately. You don't have the ability to just pull the plug right away. Things go wrong. And when they go wrong with an algo, they spiral quick. Before, sometimes before your brain can even register what happened. So there's problems with everything. Um, man, it's just a matter of trying to smooth everything out. Which again, is what I think is a benefit of, of scalp trading and taking more trades. Because the more trades you take, the more opportunity you have to find these things that are going to go wrong and break. And if something goes wrong on one trade, like, look at me, I just missed that one trade that was a part of my setup. Um, it's, it's less of a chunk out of your sample size. Whereas if you're someone who takes one trade a day and you miss your setup because something goes wrong, it's a pretty big chunk out of your week. Push to the high sixes, really, ideally, I want seven here and I would, I would have to fade that move. Doesn't look like we're going to get it. Well, we are a couple of hours <clears throat> into this scalping session. And honestly, I expected to have a lot more trades under our belt at this point. We are still stuck at zero. This is the way it goes sometimes. If we can get a push here. Again, high sixes, maybe seven ideally. That I can get an entry of fade this here. Still a lot of time left on the bar. A lot of people neglect the afternoon. And I think that's because they're primarily intraday swing traders. They really need a lot of volatility. Whereas, again, one of the benefits of being a scalper is that you can trade what a lot of people would consider as just chop. Because doesn't really change our approach all that much. Nothing there, can't take it. And when I say trade the chop, guys, don't get me wrong, there's there's chop as a scalper too. Uh, usually that ends up looking like a lot of almost like barcoding, 
where you're not getting overextensions. This ATR, you know, falls to two and a half, three. That starts being a problem. At that point, it's time to walk away and not trade that, you know, chop. But the term chop applies to an intraday swing trader a lot sooner than it does to a scalp trader. I need some of this. This is one of those days where no music, no nothing, silence, fan noise, sitting staring at the charts with your finger on the button. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> it's uh, mind numbing. This is the game. One more little push. 675. I need 675. There, we're in. First trade of the day. Mute my speakers. Got the order, all the order field notifications. I always forget to mute the speakers. All right, so uh, in there, first trade of the day. Uh, we'll see how this one plays out. But definitely taking on a lot of heat here on this scalp. That's, listen, it's a game of numbers here. <clears throat> I just need a lot of trades. The probabilities on this trade are not falling well in my favor as it plays out. But it's not about one trade for me. That, that's the beauty, again, of being able to take a lot of scalps with small size is that the pressure on every individual trade, even with a big negative reward-to-risk ratio where the win rate needs to be high, even that being the case, the pressure is still, like when you're taking on heat, the pressure is still low because uh, it's just a matter of let me find as many trades as I can, don't give up my edge, and then execute the trades. So we're going to move back upside here. This trade taking a little longer than normal. That's okay. i got to let it play out. I'm already on the tighter ratio here. Took on a lot of heat, turned around, and there's the first trade of the day, first winner of the day. Um, listen, guys, you can't... If you have a plan, a scalping plan, and this has happened to me a million times, if you have a scalping plan, you have to stick to it. Once you're... The entirety of a scalping strategy is the entry, okay? You already have predefined reward to risk, okay? You try to adjust the ratios to the volatility of the security you're trading uh, based on time of day. And then you just have to stick with it. Okay, don't make too many changes. You want the pivot points of profitability to be few and far between. So mine are the win rate and the entries, which are basically the same thing. Because for me, my win rate is going to be determined by, no, not the market. It's going to be determined by my entries. Okay, and the market a little bit. Right. So, you know, I, after that trade, I, I don't really feel anything either way. And that's just reps. It's, it's desensitizing yourself emotionally and it's just, it's just doing the reps. And eventually if you do enough reps, it just no longer really matters. Cause you know that if you take enough trades of that style, you win either way. I would like to compare it to losing maybe an NFL playoff game versus losing game two in an MLB playoff series, right? I mean, the, the MLB players, they play so many games that it's like, whatever. They forget about it by two weeks later, probably. In the NFL, it's a big deal, right? It's even regular season for both the teams is a good example. Losing is emotional when you play less games. The MLB guys, they don't care. They're going to lose a lot of games throughout the season. They're going to win a lot of games throughout the season. Except the beauty in that case is you get paid either way. <laughs> oh, also, a few more rules with my, with my uh, rubber band reaper setup. I don't take trades because it'll, it'll mess with the copy trader. I don't take trades if I'm already in a trade. So even if I'm in a trade and a candle shows a, an ATR over extension, I, I can't trade it. And these are just rules I, I've made for myself with the strategy. And I also don't trade the same candle. I don't enter on the same candle as I had an exit. Okay. So if I, let's say at like, uh, like 12.11. The 12.11 candle. If I exit a trade on that bar and then all of a sudden it keeps going and sees an, an ATR over extension, I don't enter a new trade until the next bar. And some of the rules are arbitrary, but they're mostly just, okay, what makes sense in my brain? Boom, let me put that, that together as a strategy and test it. It's really that simple. Don't overcomplicate the, uh, the strategy development side. It's just data. There we go. In there on that overextension. See, we got quite the overextension there. So, good entry there. Now, we'll just watch how this trade plays out. Taking out a lot of heat on these trades. 
And that one's going to stop us out there for the first loser of the week. All right, let's move on and see what else we can find here. Again, I can't I can't enter on the same candle I saw on exit. That's one of my rules. So I got to wait for the rollover and then we can start watching again. Looking for about 850 here before 5 seconds left on the candle. 5 seconds left to push 850 and no trade. Can't take it. Looking for a push to 9 here. There it is. In there. For the entry on that overextension and out there for a winner. With it looks like all the copy trading accounts work just fine. I got a couple of disconnections after the fact, but they all work just fine for the actual trade itself. So that's good news. By the way, guys, quick update on the PL. Those two, I think I spoke too soon. Those two accounts that kind of desynced after the fact that I was telling you about, I think those were still in a position. It's it's very hard to tell. I'm still getting used to the copy trader. <laughs> so when I when I rearmed all the accounts. I think it went flat on those, and since it was an, it you know continued higher, and I think I was still in the contract, and the unrealized PNL wasn't keeping up in time, uh, it flattened those. That's why those two accounts look f funky now. One's you know flat, and one's fifteen in the green. So that's what's going on there. I got to keep an eye on this copy trader. When when trades happen quick, it causes problems. So I'm gonna have to keep working on this thing. Looking for a bit more of a push here for an entry. There we go in there. For the entry, you can see that the volatility is starting to wind back out. But again, my rule is any vol any ATR number below 10, I trade one mini rather than five micro. So I'm going to keep it at that, and we'll see how this trade plays out. And that's going to stop us out there for the second loser here of the day. Those are the, only the first two losers of the week, so we'll move on and see what else we can find here. Again, i got to keep my win rate here, not day by day, but long term at 83 to 85%, which I believe I'm, I'm maintaining currently. So we just need more data. So let's keep looking. Any push to 14 here, I'll, I'll look to fade that upside move. There we go. In there. If we're looking to fade that upside move, we'll see how this one plays out. And out there for a winner. Let's move on and see what else we can get. We can get a push to 15. I'll fade that upside move just because we have uh, a little percentage of the move on a wick to the downside. So I kind of want to see a little, a little extra, uh, a little more than 1.5x, but, you know, one second left here anyway. No trade. So you can see here that ATR is at 9.97. If that starts bumping up above 10, I'm going to have to start thinking about going back to micros here, even in the afternoon. Uh, it's not time-based, it's volatility-based for me. So push to 15 here and I'll fade this. Again, because that part of that wick is was downside. So, I, you know, ideally above 15 would be great for an entry. Three seconds left. No trade, it's not there. Switching back to uh, micros here, switching to micros for the first time of the day since that ATR is up above 10. If we can get a push, there we go. Take an entry there. Notice how the, uh, the ratio now is a little bit wider. I have a 20-point stop with a 5-point take profit and my net size is half because I'm doing five micros rather than one mini and one one mini is equal to 10 micros so dollar amount still still the same ratio here well this trade's taking its sweet time but I'm all set and I'm out of coffee so I'll be right back well I am back and we are still in the trade guys notice how that ATR now is is has fallen over the last few bars to 895 so that means that as long as that maintains below 10 once we're out of this trade regardless if it's a, if it's a winner or a loser I'll be switching back to one uh, mini contract because now we're below 10 on the ATR and I'll tighten up the ratio, uh, lower the, well, I guess amp up the net sizing, but bring the contracts back down from five micros to one mini. That helps save on commission as well. well there we go. After 15 minutes and a lot of back and forth and a coffee break, uh, 15 minutes is long for me for a scalp. That's, I think that's the longest trade I've had all week. Well, there's another winner. So let's move on and see what we can find. Now, again, I'm going to switch back. Now that volatility, the ATR has fallen back below 10. I'm switching back to the tighter ratio rather than 5 points reward, 20 point uh, risk. I'm going to be switching back to 1 E-mini rather than 5 micros. And on the 1 E-mini, I'll be doing 2.5 point take profit, 10 point risk. And by the way, just so you guys are aware... Uh, the copy trade, I'm sorry, the PL, the realized PL, you're going to see a lot of them are going to be different. That's copy trader issues. I mean, that's part of the game, though. If you're going to trade prop money or with, with a prop firm, you got to use it. And with multiple accounts, you got to use some kind of copy trader. 
and they're the, the PL is going to be different in every account. That is, I know this might be confusing. You add all them together. It's not like the total. So currently, if we take like the average, let's say the average is like 220, maybe 200 bucks. I don't know, something around there is the average. We're looking at being down 2,000, maybe 2,200 in the would-be P&L so far here today. So let's keep, let's keep looking. Let's see if we can find anything. There we go. In there. And that overextension and quickly out. Still one left on the copier. Got to flatten that. You can see that unrealized P&L still popping. There we go. Flat on all the accounts. Copy trader is really causing me problems. I don't know about this long-term copy trading, I mean. Uh, with 10 accounts with my trading style. I'm either gonna have to just deal with it because it's usually only one or two accounts that have an issue even on the quicker trades. The most accounts I've ever had an issue with at once was four out of the 10 and that was on like an instantaneous fill on, on the target. So maybe I could deal with it long term, but we'll see here. The other solution would be just trading maybe three to five accounts, but using the bigger accounts. But right now I'm gonna stick with this. A little bit more here, one more point and I can Five seconds left, can't take it. We just got a huge wick down instantaneously. So if we see another extension on the same bar in the next six seconds, I will look to fade this anymore. And I'm in. There we go, I'm in. In there with all 10 accounts. And we'll see how this one plays out. And out there, a few accounts left over there and flat. All right, another winner. Let's move on. And he pushed down to 14 and a half or higher. And I'm in within the next 20 seconds. It's not there. No trade. I'm looking for 14 and a half. There it is. In there. Try to short that upside move. And we'll see how it plays out. And now it's going to stop us out there for another loser here on the day. And that ATR looks like it's at 10.4 behind that, that orange flag there. So I think we're going to have to switch back to trading the micros, at least for the time being. Let's do it. Let's move on. You can see that ATR has now fallen well back below 10. So I'm back to trading the, uh, the mini. Looking for a push to 10 and a quarter for a fade here. Need it in the next three seconds. Nothing. No trade. Looking for a push to 10 here, and I'll look to fade that. Hands off. No trade. Didn't quite get there. In there, on that ATR overextension. And let's see how this plays out here. And out there, filled. And we're flat. Actually, not quite. There we are. Okay, so there's a, another winner here. Let's move on. In there, on that ATR overextension. And filled for another winner. Let's move on. In there, as, <clears throat> as the range hits about 9 with an ATR of 6.2. See how this one goes. And out there for another winner. There's an entry there as range extends above 10 against a 6.37 ATR. See how this one plays out. Okay, and out there for another winner. Okay, now that, that trade right there should have brought this account here. I believe it should have brought this account into the green. But I'm still having problems with the trade copier. It, it flipped me, for some reason, when it hit target, it flipped me from short to long. Which absolutely should not happen. That, made, that doesn't make any sense at all. I'm not dealing with different quantities of orders. So, um, you know, this is just one of those, like, fully transparent things like when I'm recording this live you know you guys get to see the the issues and, and trading you know these are the problems that you're going to have especially if you're trading multiple accounts with a prop firm uh, so I'm still dealing with that here but day starting to get cleaned up a little bit I'm just gonna again for me guys unless something gets really ugly or really great where I'm emotionally fueled for me this is a, a data game and the more time well, really, the more trades I get with Edge, the better we'll do long term. 
So I'm just going to sit and continue to trade for probably another 30 minutes or so, and then we'll call it a day. So I'm not going to cut it at any specific PL point. I think that that's silly. The data doesn't care what your PL currently says. That's a gambler's fallacy in a lot of ways, unless, of course, you're emotionally fueled. And the fallacy being, you know, if I'm down a lot, I'm, I'm more likely to lose the next trade. Or if I'm up a lot, I don't want to give it back. And that's fine if you only take one or two trades a day and you're doing that to protect your psychology. That makes sense if you're protecting your psychology. But if you're doing it for any PL driven purpose, makes no sense at all. So if we get hit nine here, I'll enter. There it is. In there. As that uh, range extends to nine against about a six at the time ATR. We'll see how it plays out. And out there. Okay, so out there for another winner. You can see still having some issues here with the copier, but that's okay. We're cleaning up the day a little bit. More trades, the better here. And we're in there. In there to fade that, that ATR extension. And out there. So there's another winning trade. Uh, we have about 20 minutes left in the session. I am going to trade the whole session. And we'll take whatever else we can find here. And in there, as ATR pushes, I'm sorry, as range pushes well above the 1.5x ATR. We'll see how this one plays out. And that'll stop us out there for a loser. All right. In there, as the ATR pushed about 10 and a half against a seven, sorry, as the range pushed about 10 and a half against about a seven ATR. And out there for, uh, for a winner. So, I, guys, I think, I think with the help of a forum that I was kind of scouring for, I think I figured out the copy trading issue. So, I think what I was doing was I was using limit orders as I always do. But when you're copy trading 10 accounts, and this has had, an effect on me here today when you're copy trading 10 accounts and you have limit orders on all 10 at the same point i think what might have been happening is i was sweeping liquidity as they all tried to fill and then a few of them or one or two of them were kind of left out to dry for a second as the contract price bounces around so i just changed it to it's not ideal but i changed my parent order to from limit to market if touched and liquidity is so tight here in the futures market anyway that i'm not too worried about it but we'll see if that becomes an issue but i'd rather deal with that issue than not getting filled or getting flipped which is just just a disaster so in there and out quick so did you guys see that big old dump off <clears throat> now in hindsight had i known that it was going to be that big. Obviously, it's not easy to know in the in the split second. But clearly, so probably something just hit the market. You know, in hindsight, maybe I wouldn't have taken that scalp. But I took it. I My brain triggered big ATR. Sorry, big range compared to ATR. And I took it. And that probably wasn't perfect. Uh, and that had that been a loser, that's fine. We would have, we would have dug our way out um, in the coming, you know, day. Day, couple of days. But uh, it's a winning trade, and you know, it's not perfect, but you're going to have some trades that are less than ideal. But you know what? I'm not entirely sure that I shouldn't take in that trade either. I need more data when things like that happen. The interesting thing is that wasn't even a whole minute change. Like, that wasn't like coming into a half hour or a quarter hour or a whole hour where you get news typically. Um, but we are getting closer to the close than I... Ideally would prefer to trade on a daily basis. So I'm gonna cut it there and you know, honestly guys I'm finishing the day down about 0.5 R which all things considered is not is not bad at all. That's extremely manageable It's actually kind of a smaller red day. So I'm cool with that and you know listen as a scalp trader You gotta make the days blend together anyway, so that's gonna be it today. Today was an absolute battle a five over a five hour battle here today, and that's trading. Sometimes you battle it out for five hours and still come up short, and that's okay. Listen, if hey, if you want to get in on the Market Mastery program, click the first link in the pinned comment. If you want to book a one off, one on one meeting with me, click the second link in the pinned comment, and I'll see you in the next one.